What's up, guys? And welcome back to the Black Health Academy's Plant You. So it is your girl, Lisa A. Smith, founder of the Black Health Academy. And I'm excited to bring you this quick class all about reading food labels. This is going to be nice, short, and sweet, easily digestible, this lesson, because it's a really a basic lesson, but it's one that I find most people still struggle with or don't have a firm understanding of. And that is how to read food labels, period. And then more specifically, how to read food labels on a plant-based diet. So as you know, the Black Health Academy is strictly whole foods plant-based. So we promote a whole foods plant-based lifestyle. And so I'm going to start by defining what exactly that is. And then I'm going to go into what it means to read food labels as you navigate this grocery shopping experience, um, as you navigate this eating experience and making the transition to to a plant-based diet. If you haven't already, make sure you go back and listen to one of my Get Planet lectures right here inside of Plant You. If you hit the little drop down arrow, you should be able to scroll through the lectures and look for the one that says Get Planted because that lecture is from one of our signature first Saturday classes here in Detroit, Michigan called Get Planted an Introduction to a plant-based lifestyle. So if you're just getting started on your journey, that will be exceptionally beneficial for you so that you can kind of hear uh, our philosophies here at the Academy and get a firm, firm grasp on what we mean when we say plant-based, because that is not necessarily the same as vegan, okay? So with that being said, let's go really quickly through this today's lesson. So how to read labels on a plant-based diet and what does it mean to be plant-based? So looking at the screen here, you see I define vegan as the absence of animal products. But whole foods plant-based means the absence of animal products and processed food plus the intentional presence of plants. Now, when you hear the term plant-based, that may sound obvious, but what I've noticed has begun to happen is in the food industry, uh, food companies are starting to put plant-based on labels, making you believe or leading you to believe that that item is then healthy, right? Because the term plant-based in and of itself sounds really healthy, and it truly is. I live a whole foods plant-based lifestyle. But my definition of plant-based, as compared to a major food company's definition of plant-based, I'm finding are very different. And what is beginning to happen is that you as a consumer is getting conf confused, right? And so vegan is the absence of animal products. So that simply means a lot of our veggie burgers, there's so many brands out there, but a lot of those veggie burgers that we buy or those faux meat products or meat replacement products that you normally find in the frozen section are vegan, but they are not plant-based. That means they're usually made out of soy or some um, isolates, like you've probably seen things like pea protein isolates right on these labels. So they're made from things that may have originally been a whole food, but now they've been chopped up and manipulated. And now they're made from um, ingredients that are like isolates and extracts, but not whole complete foods. So when you are vegan, you can still eat Oreos and French fries and drink pop and drink juice and, you know, go to a restaurant and get some greasy food easily if you're vegan. But if you're plant-based, you're intentional about not doing any of those things because you're eating for health, you're eating to lose weight, you're eating to reverse or prevent disease, you're eating for your mental health, you're eating to extend your life, you're eating to reduce your risk of cancer and hypertension, autoimmune disease and type 2 diabetes and high to ward off those things that are disproportionately killing us in our community, then you're intentionally eating food as medicine. See the difference? Okay, so that's my definition or our definition here at the Academy of plant-based, okay? So let's keep going here. So let's recap. 
really quickly. What does it mean to be plant-based? Removing meat and dairy is not enough. What you do eat is just as important as what you don't eat. And here's a great quote. And I said this to a client one time and it, it was a sentence that really triggered him. It really made sense. And so I'm going to say it to you. And that, that is the absence of the good gives me just as much concern as the presence of the bad. So I was looking at his food logs and, you know, so we had his food journal and I was going over his food journal and I saw, you know, fried foods or, you know, foods that aren't quite healthy, maybe some burgers and fries, things like this. And I'm like, you know, this wouldn't alarm me so much because I know we're in the beginning stages of this thing. This wouldn't alarm me so much if in addition to these things, I also saw your fruits, your vegetables, your nuts, your seeds, your water, right? But all I saw was the processed junk. All I saw was the takeout. And so the, again, the absence of the good gives me just as much concern as the presence of the bad. Does that make sense? So make sure that you're just as intentional of about eating the things that are good for you as you are about removing the things that are not so good for you. And so down here, as you see, I have a, a picture of an impossible burger. This is a burger that you can get from like a TGI Friday's restaurant now. And this is a vegan burger. But would I consider this healthy? I don't even consider it healthy, nor do I consider it a plant-based burger. I just consider it a vegan meatless burger. And so it's topped with the nice white bread that has no flour. And you see they have a side of plants next to it. But again, don't mistake this complete meal as one that's considered whole foods plant-based. I just consider it a vegan meal, but it can get much cleaner, much better, much healthier, much more medicinal. Okay, so what does it mean to be plant-based? Look at this picture. Our diet should be 80 to 90% label-free. Our diet should be 80 to 90% label-free. So look at this beautiful produce section, guys. This produce section is where we should live. Literally, it gives me chills. <laughs> and you guys, I am totally not uh, exaggerating. I go into some produce markets, like, you know, the really nice ones where everything is laid out like this, and I geek out. I'm like, oh my God, what's this fruit? Oh my goodness, what's this vegetable? Oh my goodness. Oh, oh what this is in season. Where'd this come from? I'm, I'm going to put this in a car. I'm going to try this. Like I love fruits and vegetables. They get me really excited because all I see is literally medicine. All I see is me maintaining my size four. Like all I see is my skin popping. All I see is my, you know, me not having any uh, disease. All I see is me remaining medication free. Like when I look at this, I know I am at the pillar of my health because I live here. I live in these spaces. So our goal on a plant-based diet is to be 80 to 90% label free. And that this is what it looks like. This picture that you're seeing on your screen is what that looks like. Okay. So now let's get into the label reading part. Believe it or not, I'm um, halfway through this thing. Like this is a really quick lesson. So for the other 10 to 20%, your package products should still be made from whole, real, recognizable food. I'm going to read that sentence again. Follow along and read it with me. For the other 10 to 20%, your package products should still be made from whole, real, recognizable food. And I'm going to give you three examples of that. First, we're going to look at some peanut butter, and I'm looking at things that mostly everybody eat or are familiar with, nothing foreign or crazy. We're going to look at peanut butter first. We're going to look at a marinara sauce, like pasta sauce, and we're going to look at almond milk. And so we're going to compare two different products each time. So on this first one, we have Jif Natural Crunchy Peanut Butter. Um, now, one of the things that's really uh, deceiving about this product is look at the front of that label. It says natural. It says low sodium. It says seven grams of protein. And not only that, it's usually on the shelf next to its original version, right? So you're probably also familiar with just the original version of GIF. So here's the rub. 
if it's on the shelf on the shelf excuse me next to the original gif and then you see gif natural you probably will automatically assume oh this must be the healthier one right this is the natural one i don't need to go any further right i'm going to leave the original aka the junk on the shelf and i'm going to get the gif natural take it home to my family and kids hey guys I made a great health decision for us today, right? But let's look at these ingredients to see if that's truly the case. So looking at these ingredients here, follow my pointer, and, and I apologize for not being able to zoom in too much, but let me tell you what this says. If you squint, you can see it says ingredients made from peanuts, sugar, palm oil, and salt and molasses. Now, I wonder what's in the original, but this has peanut sugar, palm oil, salt, and molasses. So when I say whole real recognizable foods, that's interesting because another thing you want to be sure to watch out for is sugar. So while sugar is recognizable, I wouldn't consider it a whole food in that this sugar has been refined, right? They're not putting, you know, it's not made from 100% raw honey or 100% um, pure maple syrup. No, it's not sweetened, but that is sweetened with sugar, right? The refined crap that most of us are addicted to that is a narcotic that causes inflammation in your body. So they call this natural. Is that, are they wrong? No, they aren't. They legally can still say it's natural. Why? Because the sugar is not a synthetic chemical. It is a real thing. It is a natural thing, but natural does not equal healthy. So our first lesson is that the front of the label of any product, guys, is designed to sell you a product. It's, it's, it, this is a sales page. GIF, natural, low sodium, crunchy, protein. This is a sales page. So it's going to say all the words that trigger you to believe it's healthy, like organic and vegan and plant-based and, you know, heart healthy, high fiber, high protein, low fat. It's going to say all of those things on the front of the label. Your next job, you do not stop on the front of the label. Your next job is to then flip that thing over and look in the ingredients. What you notice I did not do is I did not look at the nutrition facts. Look up here, right here, where my pointer is. You see nutrition facts? That's what most people are accustomed to looking at. We usually look at nutrition facts, then we go right here to calories, then we go over here, oftentimes look at sodium, then we like to look at the protein. Every now and then, if you're, you know, if you're smart, you'll look at the fiber. But how often are you looking in the ingredients, right? The ingredients is where you need to focus. And this is a junk product. It's made with sugar, it's made with oil, and it's made with salt. The top three things I say everybody needs to um, be cognizant of when they're trying to go plant-based. Salt, oil, and sugar, right there for your ingredients. So look at, let's look at the kind of peanut butter I eat. Crazy Richard's peanut butter. <laughs> so this brand used to be called Crema, K-R-E-M-A, um, uh, but they've since changed the name to Crazy Richard's. But I, what I was really happy to find is with changing the name, they have not changed the ingredients. So this might look like a whole lot of text you should see on your screen, but what this is a picture of it's just the label stretched out, right? If we were to unwrap this label from around this jar, this is just it stretched out. But look at those ingredients. So let me drag my pointer over here for you. Ingredients, peanuts. That's it, folks. That's all, folks, right? So peanuts, that's, now that's a whole real recognizable ingredient, right? Keyword, whole. Peanuts, that's it. So what that means is the only reason you're buying this this peanut butter. The only reason you're buying a packaged product is because you don't feel like doing it yourself. And so you're paying somebody else to do it for you. Could you make your own peanut butter? Absolutely. You could go out and buy whole peanuts and literally crush them up or whatever, blend it, whatever, right? So that you get the creamy texture that you like and you have peanut butter. That's all I paid Crazy Richard to do for me. He's so crazy. <laughs> He's so crazy, right? So I pay Crazy Richard 
to grind up the peanuts for me. And I'm pr paying a pretty penny because I could, again, go buy my own peanuts and blend it down and do the exact same thing Crazy Richard did. But that's how I want my packaged foods to be. I want my packaged foods to be whole, real, and recognizable, understanding that I'm only buying this product because it's out of convenience for me, not because I want preservatives or added sugars or dyes like blue number seven, yellow number five, red number 40. Like that's not what I want in my food. I can't replicate those ingredients. I only want to buy things that I can replicate. The ingredients, listen closely, the ingredients is the recipe, right? And I should be able to duplicate that recipe. It's as simple as that. It doesn't get any simpler than that. You turn these food products over, you skip the nutrition facts here, and you go straight to the ingredients. And the first question you should ask yourself is, can I duplicate this recipe by looking at Crazy Richard's ingredients? Could I technically make this at home? And the answer should always be a resounding yes. Okay, so let's look at some almond milk now. Oh, no, my pasta sauce. We got two more, pasta sauce um, and almond milk. So this is a really common brand. I'm sure you've seen Berea Marinara Sauce. It's brand before I got hip. And here's the deal. Let's look at the front of the package again. Traditional, all natural. And they even had a nerve to have pictures of vegetables on the front, right? Onion, tomato, garlic. Okay, cool. Now, let's do our due diligence. Again, we flip this jar over. We ignore nutrition facts. Calories don't matter. We don't, that doesn't matter. And we go straight to the ingredients. Tomato puree. Look at that, which is made out of water and tomato paste. Diced tomatoes, which is made out of tomatoes and citric acid. And citric acid is just vitamin C. Look at that next one though. Sugar, dehydrated garlic, dried onion, extra virgin olive oil, more vitamin C and oregano. So as you see, this almost was good. This was almost a clean product, right? But it has added sugar. When I tell you guys, sugar is one of the deadliest things we put in our body. It causes inflammation. It causes neuropathy. It causes a compromised immune system. It causes um, heart disease, auto, uh, it clogs your arteries. There is so many adverse effects when it comes to sugar. And, and I say that to say you can't afford just a little bit, especially if you already have an addiction. If you know you struggle with sugar, eating this marinara sauce on top of some pasta is going to trigger that dopamine hit in your brain that's going to want you that's going to make you want more and more. Don't think because this isn't a cookie um, or a slice of cake or a piece of candy or a pop that this sugar is okay. Sugar is sugar. And if they add it to your food, it's a problem. Do not buy anything with sugar in the ingredients. So let's look at a clean marinara sauce. So this is Berea. And then let's look at Classical Reserva, right? So Classical Reserva marinara sauce. Now, they don't have any of those, you know, trigger words on the front. Um, it does say on the front of the package, no artificial ingredients and no sugar added, which is really important. Why did they feel the need to even put that on the front of the label? I'll tell you why. Because 90% of marinara sauces have sugar added. So they're like, look, we're not like the rest of those people. Choose us. We're not giving you all that junk, that inflammatory, those inflammatory foods. So let's look at the ingredients right here. Follow my pointer. Ground tomatoes, tomatoes, tomato puree, vitamin C, extra virgin olive oil, onions, garlic, sea salt, spices, right? Now, I would have preferred they spelled out what the spices were, right? Um, but there isn't any sugar added. Now, one thing I want to point out about this <clears throat> is over here under nutrition facts. Now, one, if you were trying to watch your sugar and I told you you cannot have anything with sugar added and then you picked up this pasta sauce, this marinara sauce, and you saw on the nutrition facts label, look right here, that there are five grams of sugar. 
So if you looked right here where my pointer is and you saw that there were five grams of sugar and you stopped there, you will probably put this back and say, shoot, I can't find a marinara sauce with no sugar. But here's a lesson. Listen closely. This five grams of sugar comes from the tomatoes. Mm, it just got good. This five grams of sugar comes from the tomatoes, guys. So what does that mean? That means sugar is not listed in the ingredients because they didn't add sugar. So my instruction to you was you're not allowed to have anything with added sugar. There are plenty of fruits and vegetables with naturally occurring sugar. And that's what this is. And tomatoes are one of them. So that's why it's so important to not just focus on the nutrition facts, but to also read the ingredients because you could either be choosing a bad product that looks good in the nutrition facts or putting back a good problem, a good product that you are under the impression it looks bad in the nutrition facts. And I probably said that in the most confusing way ever, but what I'm saying is read those ingredients. It's exceptionally important. I would buy this product because it's made from recognizable ingredients that I could technically duplicate. Let's go now. I think this is our final label we're going to read together, and that is almond milk. Now, I wanted to choose almond milk because when we um, teach about going dairy-free and the vast importance of your entire family, even your babies, being 100% dairy-free, um, we are always plagued with that ne next question, which is what? What are the alternatives? Now, almond milk is one of the most common non-dairy alternatives. If you have any type of allergy to nuts, no worries. You can totally um, buy a, 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 a non-dairy milk that's not made from nuts. So you could buy an oat, O-A-T, oat milk, you hemp milk, H-E-M-P. Like there's still a bunch of non-dairy versions. I'm just using almond milk in this example because it's so common. So let's look at the ingredients here. Now, this is a, a common brand. Blue Diamond. This is a almond milk. And one of the most important things, most important, is that it's unsweetened. They usually add sugar to non-dairy milks because milk from a cow has naturally occurring sugar and it's a little sweeter. And so to try and duplicate that taste of real milk, they add sugar to some um, non-dairy milks. So make sure, first and foremost, that the non-dairy milk you pick up, whether it's almond milk, coconut milk, hemp milk, flax milk, I don't eat it, okay? Now, so you see that right here at the top of my label. Now let's go over again and look at those ingredients. Now under the nutrition facts side, you see zero sugars, zero sugar. And you're like, okay, this is a good product because so far we've kind of been just, I've been highlighting sugar, but I want to highlight some other stuff. So now let's look at the ingredients because you're going to do your due diligence here and you're going to take a gander at the ingredients. Here it is. Almond milk, filtered water and almonds. Okay. Calcium carbonate, sea salt, potassium citrate, sunflower lecithin, gel and gum, natural flavors, vitamin, vitamin A palmitate, vitamin D2, D alpha, uh, vitamin E. <laughs> um, so here's my point, right? You see um, a lot of added ingredients that aren't the almond milk part, right? The almond milk is just a filtered water and almonds. Hint, hint, you can make this at home, but if we want to pay for convenience, which many of us do, myself included, then we're going to buy a product, right? Now, they, on top of the almond milk, filtered water and almonds, they now added all of these things. What is calcium carbonate? What is potassium citrate, right? What is sunflower lecithin? What is gel and gum? Like, what are natural flavors? Oh, my goodness. If anybody has ever taken my 12-week uh, course, Farm to Table, I do an entire lesson about um, products, reading labels on products, and I go in, in, um, in detail about natural flavors. But this is intense because there is so much added to this quote-unquote non-dairy milk. And I want to be very clear, this is vegan. 
Okay, so if we stuck with the original definition of vegan and said the absence of animal products, this product would totally pass the test and you will buy this and you would take home to your family. and You will say, guys, I made a great health choice for us today. Right. However, I'm not saying you didn't because milk is one of um, dairy milk is one of the worst things you can put in your body. So this is 100 times better. I used to buy this product myself until I got hip and now I buy. Oh, oh. Now I buy mock. So look at this. The the one of the nine dairy milks that I buy is this brand here, mock. Now the blue one in the center is the almond milk. You see it says pure almond. The one to the left of that is pecan milk. Um, the one to the right of it is uh, pure almond milk. And I think this is a vanilla flavor. Um, then over here is a cashew milk. They have a coffee. Mock has an entire line of products clearly but i'm highlighting the one in the middle just so we can compare it to uh, the blue diamond brand and that's the almond milk you see here it says cold pressed right but the most important thing is look at these ingredients filtered water organic almonds himalayan sea salt or just himalayan salt excuse me right three simple ingredients wow what a difference what a difference, right? So as you begin to make the transition to a plant-based lifestyle, you quickly begin to notice that there's levels to this thing. So should you be dairy-free? Yes. What's that last milk, that Blue Diamond dairy-free? Yes. But is that enough? No. Once you get comfortable and you start elevating because you're going to be in a constant state of learning, you're not going to just say, okay, I made the change and now I'm done. I don't have to think about it anymore. No, you always want to get better and better and better, right? So now if, you've, if you're one of those people who drink the Blue Diamond milk or any other brand like that, there's so many, there's, silk, there's so many with a laundry list of ingredients. Now you, you've showed up here to this lesson, you've educated yourself, and now you're just going to elevate. We're not going to excuse the pun, cry over spilled milk, right? We're not going to be like, oh my God, I was doing this all wrong. We're not going to, there's no guilt. You're not going to beat yourself up. Now you've, you've, you're in the academy. You're in a position to learn this content. I'm proud of you. You should be proud of yourself. Now you're just going to take it to the next level. Now you're going to graduate to the mall. That's all you're doing. You're just graduating to the next level, right? You, they, it took some graduating to go from dairy to non-dairy. So now you're going to graduate again. So here we go. We're going to choose a brand like Malk. Another brand I can tell you that's really clean is called Elmhurst, E-L-M-H-U-R-S-T. So you don't have to buy the brand I buy. You, all I need you to do is look at the ingredients and make sure they're simple and they can be duplicated. I don't care about the brand name. Malk doesn't pay me any money. They should, right? Here I am, you know, advertising for them. But Malk, I don't get anything off of this. So I don't care what brand you buy. What I care about is the ingredients because you may live somewhere in the world. We have members all over the world. You may live somewhere where mock isn't available. That does not mean, listen closely, if mock is not available in your area, that does not mean a clean non-dairy milk is not available to you. That means you just need to find another brand that's clean. The point of this lesson is not to promote brands, it's to promote clean ingredients, okay? Okay, so you're going to read the ingredients, and then you're going to make a better choice because you want ingredients that you can duplicate. Let's review. Here's your label reading takeaways from Plant You Inside the Black Health Academy. Number one, a plant-based diet should be 80 to 90% label free. Number two, simply not eating meat and dairy is not enough. You must unprocess your diet. The ingredients is the recipe. The question you should ask yourself always is, can you duplicate the recipe? You want absolutely no sugar, preservatives, or dyes in the ingredients. And finally, vegan does not automatically equal healthy. Okay, so there it is. I hope this lesson was extremely, extremely beneficial for you. Um, and if you have any questions, drop us a note right below this video, right below this lesson, or you know, make a comment. Uh, tell me what you got from this lesson. Let us know that it's working, that you're learning, and that you're gonna take these things back and uh, absolutely apply it to uh, your life and to your family's life. Like, let us know. Um, if you should be in our private Facebook group, drop a line in the Black Health Academy members only private Facebook group and let us know. Um, did you get some value out of this week's lesson? What do you learn? How are you grocery shopping differently? 
everything you buy that's in a package, guys, should be completely absent of sugar and should be 100% whole real recognizable food that you can duplicate. That's it for me. You have an absolutely amazing rest of your day. Take care.